Hi, hello, my name is Gomer Joseph. I hope you've all been having a great day so far. Welcome back to another True Crime Tuesdays video. If you are new, I welcome you. Today, I'll be discussing the unsolved disappearance of Aisha Degree. As I was researching this case, I just found that it was completely insane. Like, it seems as if this girl vanished into thin air. And it's so difficult to determine why she's been missing all of these years. Here we go. Aisha Degree was born on August 5th, 1990 in Shelby, North Carolina. She is the second child of Harold and Aquila Degree. Her older brother's name is O'Brant Degree. Her, growing up, her immediate and extended family were really close. Aisha also grew up in a Christian home. People described Aisha as someone who loved church. She was great at school, loved math and science, loved reading and writing, even wanted to be an illustrator when she grew up. She was athletic, but basketball was her favorite sport, and she was known to be responsible. On February 12, 2000, nine-year-old Aisha lost a basketball game, and she was pretty upset since she felt like she let her team down, but she quickly felt better. The next day, after attending church, Aisha and her immediate family spent time at her aunt's house where her grandmother cooked dinner. Later that night, she went to bed at 8 p.m. and woke up to a thunderstorm. The storm caused some type of power outage in the neighborhood, and soon after, Harold, her father, came back at uh, 12 30 a.m. the power was restored. Harold checked on the kids twice. Aisha actually shared the room with her brother. O'Brien heard Aisha leave the room to use the bathroom. Later on he heard her bed squeak thinking that she was going back to sleep. At 6 30 a.m. Aquila was about to wake up her kids. She found O'Brien sleeping but she saw that Aisha wasn't in her bed, which she felt was strange. Aquila began to search the house, but Aisha was nowhere to be found. The mother began to panic. She looked outside, but she still couldn't find Aisha. This is when she woke Harold up and told him everything. Harold, I guess in order to calm his wife down, advised Aquila to call her mother to see if Aisha was there. Aquila called, but Aisha wasn't at the house either, and this is when Harold called the cops. The police arrived at 6.40 a.m. with search dogs. Unfortunately, the dogs weren't able to pick up Aisha's scent because of the thunderstorm. The police and Aisha's family began to search for the girl in the neighborhood. Later on, at least 60 people in the neighborhood joined to search for Aisha. Aisha's family searched her bedroom for clues, but found that Aisha's backpack was missing, which had the house key, Aisha's Tweety Bird purse, and some clothes in it. This indicated that Aisha left on her own free will, and I can't understand why she would leave because it seemed like she had a loving home and didn't have issues with her family. Like, what reason would she have to leave, and where exactly did she intend to go? The local news broadcasted this story. At least three different witnesses said that they saw Aisha walking alongside the North Carolina Highway 18 between 3.45 to 4.15 a.m., the morning she went missing. The highway was a block away from Aisha's house. One witness who actually had the sense to do something did express concern, especially since Aisha was in the middle of a thunderstorm and had no winter clothes on. The driver made a U-turn to see if Aisha needed any help. The driver was actually taken by surprise when Aisha rushed off into the woods and completely vanished. Like once again, like just makes me ask the question, like why did she leave her house and where was she so bent on going? Police heavily searched the woods. They found a shed where Aisha might have sheltered herself, found candy wrappers, a pencil, a marker, and a Minnie Mouse hair bow. Aisha's family did confirm that those items did belong to her. The following month, Aisha's family sold t-shirts with her face on it to wear awareness. 
Unfortunately, this had to stop since a selfish individual was taking money from these t-shirt sales. Enough money was raised in order to offer a $5,000 reward for any info to help find Aisha. Now, this case was um, pretty much gaining some type of attention. This case was shown on Oprah, The Montel Williams Show, and America's Most Wanted. On August 3rd, 2001, the case was about to get cold. A contractor 26 miles away from where Aisha disappeared dug up a backpack wrapped with two black trash bags. Police searched the area and they found uh, men's khaki pants and skeletal remains of an animal. The police still believed Aisha ran away, but that there could have been foul play involved afterward. With the two trash bags, which Aisha didn't have, and finding a man's khaki pants, it does make things sketchy to me and does make it seem like Aisha didn't completely disappear on her own. The family confirmed the backpack belonged to her since her name and phone number were printed on it. On January of 2014, police arrested 52-year-old Donald Preston Ferguson at Spartanburg, South Carolina for the murder of 7-year-old Shalanda Poole in 1990. This man had history of having trouble with the law. In June of 1989, Ferguson actually did assault a 10-year-old girl. Ferguson did get bailed out, and while awaiting trial, he relocated in Greensboro, North Carolina, where he met Shalanda through her half-brother. He moved back to South Carolina after Shalanda's body was found. He went to trial in March 1991. He was found guilty and sentenced to eight years in prison, but was somehow released two years earlier in October of 1997. Police did look into Ferguson as a suspect for Aisha's disappearance since there were similarities to Shalanda's case. Shalanda did share a room with her twin sister and vanished the next morning. After investigating, the police did find that Ferguson had no involvement in Aisha's disappearance. In February of 2015, Cleveland County Sheriff's Office and the FBI re-examined Aisha's case. They discovered there might have been sightings of Aisha entering a dark green early 70s Lincoln Continental Mark IV or Ford Thunderbird with rust along the wheels. In October of 2018, there were clues related to the case like Mick Elegance pulled by Dr. Seuss and a white t-shirt and a red collar of New Kids on the Block. These Clues were pretty much shown to the public in hopes of jogging somebody's memory. The community still has missing pictures of Aisha. The family created a scholarship in Aisha's name. They sell t-shirts of Aisha's picture to actually help raise money for the scholarship. Aisha's family hosts an annual walk to where Aisha was last seen. This at first started every Valentine's Day, but changed to every February 7th since Aquila didn't want people to be sad when Valentine's Day is a holiday for people to celebrate love. Again, I absolutely have no idea what would have caused Asia to leave her house, especially when there was this storm in the middle of winter. She would be like 29 by now, and I just can't see her successfully disappearing on her own at the age of 9. Once again, there is a possibility that she entered a vehicle, but it's not 100% certain though. I can't imagine what her family has been going through these last 19 years. Like, they miss Aisha tremendously and are just desperate for answers to questions they've had for almost two decades. Like, my prayer is that she will be found and that the family would find out exactly what happened. Her family does believe that Aisha could still be alive and there's nothing indicating that she's dead. The only thing that any of us can have peace about is that God knows exactly where Aisha is and he knows exactly what happened to her. I appreciate you guys taking the time of your day to watch this video. If you guys did like this video, please feel free to hit the like button. If you guys would like me to talk about a certain true crime case, please feel free to let me no, and if you guys have any thoughts on this case, please leave your thoughts in the comment section. If you guys want to see more videos from me, please feel free to subscribe and click the bell to be notified about the next video. I'll see y'all next time for True Crime Tuesdays. I'll talk to y'all later.